your host, Dr. Katherine Clinton, and I'm excited to offer an introduction to what quantum biology is, why it's important, and how we can start supporting it. So thank you so much for joining me. When I start to speak about quantum biology, often the first question is, what is quantum biology? Quantum biology is the microscopic, subatomic pieces of our biology and how that powers the bigger picture of life that we see, whether it's our blood work or our symptoms, they all are being powered by these microscopic quantum interactions that our body has within itself and with the world around it. Quantum biology looks at the movement of quantum particles such as protons, electrons, photons of light, phonons of sound, particles of frequency information from emotion. All of these things have a foundational impact on our bigger biology. So long we've been taught in school that our biology runs on this random collision of a key and a lock model, right? But what we know now is that each one of our cells has over a hundred thousand reactions per second. And we have trillions and trillions of cells within our body. That random collision model, that lock and key, explanation of how our biology works is no longer sufficient to explain what's happening with a hundred thousand different reactions every second in trillions of cells within our body that model simply cannot explain the speed and efficiency that our body utilizes to perform these processes and when we take a deeper dive into what's happening we see that the quantum phenomenon that we thought was isolated to a lab is is actually rich and expansive throughout our body. We now know from research that these quantum particles, electrons and protons, photons of light, they can be entangled with quantum entanglement and superimposed for example, our mitochondria are using entangled electrons to convey messages throughout our biology. We know that quantum phenomenon as far as tunneling is happening in our enzymes, our proteins, that electron transport chain in the mitochondria, it's happening throughout our fascial network and our collagen tropohelix, those triple helix bonds that our fascia and collagen create, forming those nanotubules of quantum communication throughout our body. We now know that this liquid crystalline property that is in all of our cell membranes, that's within our fascia, that's within our DNA, and this liquid crystalline property that our cells, our fascia, our DNA have is what is powering the tech that we are so used to and accustomed to in everyday life. From our smartphone screens, to our TV screens, to our computer screens, these are all liquid crystal technology. Same thing, those molecules are aligned and when light enters into the, that liquid crystalline technology, that light is polarized by the collective movement of those atoms, acting as individuals in a collective, aligned and ordered. All the molecules are reacting in the same way. This is what powers our liquid crystal technology, and this is the same technology that is happening within us. We see the same thing happening with quantum computing and quantum devices in the medical world, the nanotechnology and quantum dots that are being used so successfully in medicine have their origin in quantum physics and our quantum biology. Our antioxidants and polyphenols and flavonoids act as those quantum dots, just like in quantum computing. And we know that six months ago, I was saying it would be a year or two before we had a commercial quantum computer, and now it's here. We're making literal quantum leaps in our information about what's happening at this microscopic level. And we're finding out that quantum physics isn't just for the laboratory, isn't just for our technology and our computers, that the chaos of our body and all the different electromagnetic frequencies that are happening at all times from all of our different cells and our 
thoughts and the inputs from the elements around us, the earth and the wind and the air, the temperature, the cold, the sun, the water, all of these things have a foundational impact on our biology. And they are actually more efficient, more coherent than the technology we have before us. And that is the amazing thing that science is catching up to. And the research in the last year has become absolutely mind-blowing. We have actual footage of our cells responding to the electromagnetic field via biophoton emission, via light that we emit from our cells regardless of temperature or light in our external environment. We truly are light beings. We also, in the last few months, have amazing research out showing that DNA replication is being driven again by this photonic information, this light-driven replication via that structured water body that captures that frequency information, stores that frequency information, and utilizes it for biological action. So whether it's the DNA, chromosomes that are replicating and forming our genetic expression, whether it's how our immune system communicates both within us and the outside world, whether it's our nervous system and how we handle stress and trauma, or our brain and how we utilize information and our memory. All of these things have such a foundational imprint from our quantum biological state. It is no longer possible for us to ignore the power that quantum biology holds, both in our health and in the health of the planet we live on. Now, our tech is quantum. It's liquid crystalline in nature. Our quantum computing is coming to the forefront and is now commercially available. Now is the time to apply these concepts to our health, not only our health, but the health of the planet we live on. We are in desperate need of solutions and a way forward. We are as sick as we have ever been. More than half of our children are chronically ill and not a cold or flu, a daily medical condition that deprives them of quality of life. This is where we're at and this is what quantum biology offers us. It offers us a new paradigm from which to look at health, a new perspective from which to explore what's happening with the epidemic of chronic disease that we're experiencing now. And I believe that it holds the key, not only to our healing, but healing the planet that we live on. Because when we're talking about health, we don't end at the barriers of our skin. We are intimately and inseparably connected with the world around us. And quantum biology acknowledges that, emphasizes that, and utilizes these relationships to build that health so that we can be the change that this world so desperately needs. If we were to zoom out, quantum biology really holds within it that yin yang, that polarity that we see in so many indigenous medical traditions. We see that that polarity between light and dark, positive and negative, is something that is at work within our body at all times. We see that with the flow of protons and electrons. Keeping that electrical charge within our body is paramount to our health. And we see that not only is it the flow of electrons creating ATP within our mitochondria, that flow of electrons that lines our entire planet and that fits so congruently with our physiology, all we need to do is come in physical contact with the surface of the earth so that we are able to collect those electrons and use them for biological action within our body. It's not just those electrons. There is that duality with our protons as well. The gr electrical gradients that are set up within our bodies are both powered by electrons and protons. We see our detox pathways are ridding our physiology of that excess positive charge, whether it's our tears or our 
urine, all of these things have a positive charge and we eliminate them continuously throughout the day so that we can maintain that positive charge. When we dive a little bit deeper and look at the gut microbiome, we see that our microbiome is acting as a reservoir of these potential charges, feeding our physiology with positive charge so that we can maintain those gradients, degrading that positive charge if we need. A lot of us are used to looking at gastrointestinal health through the lens of condition after condition. We look at small intestinal bacterial overgrowth as simply the overgrowth of different microbes, but we forget to zoom out and look at how these pieces fit together in a bigger puzzle. We see quite clearly that our physiology is intimately and inseparably connected with that microbiome, whether it is feeding us those positive charges through hydrogen sulfide, whether it is affecting our nitrous oxide pathways, there is this beautiful dance happening on a microscopic level that has profound and dramatic impacts for our biology. And for too long, mainstream medicine, mainstream science has pushed this to the side. And now science is finally catching up. In the last two years, we have discovered that our DNA is liquid crystal in nature. Not only our cell membranes and our mitochondria and our fascia, but our actual DNA and chromosomes are liquid crystal in nature. And that means that all of the molecules within that structure, within that tissue are aligned and ordered and responding as a collective to the frequency information in their environment, whether that's internally or externally, whether it's the frequency of our thoughts and emotions or whether it's the frequency of our external electromagnetic fields. Both are having a profound effect on our liquid crystalline matrix within us, whether it's a cell membrane, whether it's a mitochondria, whether it's our fascia or our DNA and chromosomes. They are all individual cells and atoms working together as a collective working together to propel this frequency information throughout our body. We see this throughout mitochondrial research where the liquid crystalline structure of structured water is used to allow those protons to travel instantaneously anywhere in the body. The interaction between our quantum biological state and our health that we've been used to tracking via imaging and blood work, all of these things are being powered by our quantum biology. I'm so excited that you're here and joining us for this unique paradigm shift that's happening in science and medicine. Whether it's our cardiovascular system, whether it's how our brain is working, whether it's how our immune system functions, or our mitochondria, all of these things are happening in this backdrop of an infinite sea of quantum biology where our life, our DNA, our genetic expression, the way our physiology functions is being driven and powered by these quantum biological actions. I'm so glad that you are here opening up this new window into a new perspective on how we understand not only our biology, but life here on this planet and how we are intimately and inseparably connected to the world around us. And regardless of what it is, whether it's our cardiovascular system, our immune system, our nervous system, our ability to handle trauma, our fascia, whether it is the structured crystalline water that forms and lines every single one of our cells and vessels, tissues and organs within our body. They are all being powered by the sea of quantum biological action. And I'm so glad you are here adding momentum to this perspective change in science. I am thrilled to be sharing with you some of the leading experts in quantum biology and medicine. 
Thank you so much for joining me. Let's take this information and push for the change we so desperately need.